people, great. My name is Victor Baradragarago, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, today, I want to give a brief history of uh, Timothy Naku Paul Birabi, uh, the father of modern Ogoni, and uh, the man whom uh, Nabdi Azikiwe described on his death as the son of Ogoni. Because Nnamdi Azikwe said that Ogoni have lost a son, that's the shining one, and Nigeria have lost a son, as like a male child. That was how Nnamdi Azikwe described him. So he was the father of modern Ogoni, and uh, the man whom Kensaran Uwa revealed and uh, told us that handed over the mantle of leadership to him to carry on the Ogoni struggle in. Uh, bring the Ogoni people into the our little paradise. So I want to give a very brief history about him because uh, it is good we tell good histories so that people can understand, children that are coming up can understand because if there is anyone that has had great impact on me as regarding the history of Birabi is my mother. You know, she told us about Birabi right when we were small, so that had a great impact on me. She told us everything about Birabi, she told us. And I, I, it made me have keen interest in trying to discover this man, try to know this man the more. And despite the research and all those things I did, but I'm telling you over 90 something percent I know about Birabi today was told me by my mom. So uh, it is, it is uh, expedient that we also tell our coming generations so that they can know what was, what is, and what is to come. So let's go to uh, Birabi. Birabi was born in 1916 in Yege. In October 1916 in Yege. He was born. His name is Timothy Naku Paul Birabi. I think he was named after his father. His father was Paul Birabi. So when he was born, they named him Timothy. Naku Paul Birabi. And they called him Naku because they said he didn't crawl like a normal child. He just got up and then one day he got up and walked. So that was something very special about uh, that young uh, 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 man, our, 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 our forefather Birabi. That was something so special about him. And he attended his primary school in Yege, later moved on to uh, Wembiara in Bukana, and then he moved on to Bonnie to complete his primary school. And something happened because as at then, the uh, church missionaries, they were opening churches. And so in one of those classes, the Reverend uh, Jumbo looked at him and observed that this young man was a very brilliant chap. So he took special interest in him. So Reverend Jumbo, which later became uh, Bishop Demiari, took Birabi along to Boni. So why in Boni, Birabi completed his primary school and then he was sent to uh, Onija in present day Anambra State. That was where he did his uh, secondary school. I think that in the, which, uh, Dennis Memorial Grammar School. That was where he did his secondary school. So upon completion, and one thing about him is that instead of five years, they said he was exceptionally brilliant. So he now used four years in completion and he got his uh, uh, West African examination certificate then, which was called Cambridge then. So instead of using five years, he used four years. So when he completed the secondary school, he went into a CMS training college to be trained as a professional teacher. And then after that, he moved on to, uh, he thought he was, he was employed to teach, so he taught in school. And then he moved on again to Achimota College in Ghana. And then after that, he also came back to Nigeria when he completed and got his BA. And one thing was, he was made the uh, vice principal of OGS Okirika, OGS o o o Okirika in River State. He was made the vice principal. Then after that, uh, Birabi got scholarship, or was he was just on scholarship because he was exceptionally brilliant. 
So he was just on scholarship, one scholarship after the other. So he was on scholarship again to Southampton in London, in the UK, and then Southampton University. So when he, after there, he moved on to King's College. So that was when he completed everything and uh, had his BA Hans in uh, mathematics and uh, geography. And it is of interest to know that in all this, he was studying mathematics everywhere he went, mathematics, geography, mathematics, geography. So he, he, was, he, was, he was very, very good at it. And then he, he, he also enrolled for postgraduate degree, but because of untimely death, he couldn't uh, continue anymore. So that is a brief history about his education. Now let's go to his political you know, background. Yes, he was member of the uh, House of Representatives in the then Eastern region. And then he was in the party, the NCNC and the Cameroon. He was among them with uh, Dr. Nandi Azikiwe and the rest. So he was also in the Federal House of Representatives in Lagos. And he uh, represented Nigeria in the 1953 Constitutional Conference on Way Forward to Nigerian Democracy. So he represented the NCNC there in London. And it was upon his return from London in 1953 that Birabi died. So you can understand how this young man did everything. He died at the age of 37. He did everything. So in the House of Representatives, it was recorded that when they were just discussing about independence and red, while some were shying away from independence, he boldly told them that Nigeria is like a fruit, is like a, a, a tree that has fruit on it. And some of the fruits are ripe, while some are unripe. And that if you wait for the ones that are unripe to get ripe, then the ones that are ripe already will get rotten. So those that are ready, those that are ripe should be plucked. Meaning that those who are ready for independence should have independence and those who are not ready should continue until they, they think they are ready for independence. You see? So that was one of the great speech he made in the, among the speeches in the House of Representatives then. So Birabi was, he had, apart from other principles, but there are two basic principles, which I think my father told me this. He said, because my father said he was in, I think, class three in a secondary school when Birabi died. In, he was in, in, in Portacot then, and uh, he, he cried, he wept that day uncontrollably, he couldn't control himself. So he told me Birabi main thing was self-sufficiency and dignity of labor. Those were his principles. He taught Ogoni people how to be self-sufficient. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be begging. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be beggars. He taught us how to be self-sufficient and he taught us how to, 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 to employ what called dignity of labor. You, whatever thing you find doing, do it well. Whatever legitimate thing you are doing, there shouldn't be any shame about it. You should do it well. Be happy that you are doing it and do it with honor. So that is what he taught Ogoni people. And you can see that in the history of Ogoni people, we've not been involved in this begging stuff and those things. No, because this young man impacted a lot into people. So that is that aspect of it. And when we talk of development, man, he was the center of development in Ogoni. Everything. The secondary school, Bilabi Memorial Grammar School, you see, he was the founder. The General Bori General Hospital, you see, the post office in Bori, everything. He attracted all those development to Ogoni land. He bought Kenu, both paddle, nets, and several things for fishermen all over Ogoni. Those that were into those kind of business, he bought it for them. He also opened a company called Gwenebongana. That company, they, were, they, 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 they produced, he taught them how to can palm wine, and it lasts for more than six months. 
fresh palm wine. They can eat, and it lasts for more than six months. So by, by today, Ogoni would have been an industrial hub. By today, if his principles were, were followed after his death. So he taught them how to he taught them how to use lime juice and clay to form to, to make pottery and tires. He taught them several things. And then he had a team of surveyors. He was into surveying with his knowledge in mathematics and geography. He had a team. So he moved with them all around Ogoni. He surveyed around the entire Ogoni. So this young man had a vision for Goni people. In fact, when he was asked, because he, what he bought then was a bicycle. So he was using his own bicycle, riding bicycle all around Ogoni and constructing roads, constructing other things, developing Ogoni land. So when he was asked, why is it that he, he refused to buy a car like his other uh, comrades or his other uh, 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 <laughs> friends in the other uh, regions in Nigeria? He asked them, how many of the person can afford a car? That he prefers to buy this, to use this bicycle to just navigate around the, the Ogoni land and use everything he had to develop Ogoni land because he knew Ogoni was backward. So every money he had was into development in Ogoni. This is a man who never built a single house for himself. He lived in his father's house till he died. But he was building things for Goni people. This is a leader. That is a heart of a leader. So the man was he was he was carried away by Ogoni development. He was into Ogoni development, and everything he did, all his life, he ensured that everything was for Ogoni development. So when you, you when when you look at leaders of today. Sometimes you 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 will be ashamed. You will ask yourself, are they truly representing the people? Birabi did a lot. did a lot of things in his short life. He lived. He did a lot of things. At thirty-seven, he died. He did a lot of things for Goni people, and those things are still there. You can you can still see it. So this is what a leader should look like. This is the type of leader we should emulate. This is the kind of lifestyle we should emulate. Because he was a man who wasn't for himself, but for the people. So I was so fascinated about the story of Birabi and everything, because that is the kind of leader we should aspire to be. Now he, he he was he was he, he was part of those who advocated for the for Rivers Province, and when Rivers Province was created, he also advocated for the creation of Ogoni Province, which was also created. And not only that, he formed Ogoni State Representative Assembly. That was to champion the cause of Ogoni people, to ensure that Ogoni people did not miss out of anything, to ensure that Ogoni was autonomous on his own to ensure that Ogoni achieve autonomy and to develop themselves because he knew every all around him he was the first Ogoni graduate so you could imagine what such person we go through that you, you are the only person that have gotten a degree in your entire region in your entire tribe so there was so much on him and he gave everything I mean he gave everything and even gave his life. Because when you hear stories of how he died, which I won't say it here, you will understand he gave everything for Goni people, for the less privileged. You see, today he's one of the forgotten heroes in Nigeria. They will never mention him. Dr. Namzi Aziki will say, Ogoni have lost a son, the shining one, and Nigeria have lost a son. But he's forgotten. In the history of Nigeria, have you heard anything about him? They will never tell you. But this was a man who was at the forefront of everything. This was a minister designate. On his return from London in 1953, he was supposed to be appointed as the Minister of Education. 
So everything was done, but due to untimely death, he did so much, not only for Guni, but for Nigeria. And he knew how his people should fare in that system. But death took him away. So there's a whole lot to, to learn about or to learn from Birabi. There is, there, is, there is a whole lot. You can make your personal research and then you discover that there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot he did. And uh, to end this uh, broadcast, I want to uh, let me read what the pilot, uh, the, the West African pilot newspaper, Tuesday, October 27. 1953 what they said about him they said in a unique tribute okay in a unique tribute to in honor of late timothy birabi titled passing of a great of great ogoni son let me read what they said Say it is very rare to find young men who spawn all F offers and prospect of lucrative appointments in order to serve their people in a very selfless manner. It is even more difficult to find young men who, after brilliant scholastic career abroad, agree to remain in their more backward home in order to help their less privileged people. This is who he was. He would have lived flamboyant lifestyle. He would have lived luxuriously like his friends who are living in other parts of Nigeria. But he refused to live that kind of life. Rather, what he did was to go back home and to ensure that he committed everything he had to the development of his people. Today, it is a lesson for each and every one of us to learn from. And tell your children history. Tell them what they should know. Because some history are going extinct. So, I want to say that this is the man Birabi. This is the man that started everything about Ogoni in terms of education, politics, Ogoni kingdom, and the rest. And then when the, the, the intrepid Ogoni man, Ken Sarawiwa, came up, <laughs> oh my God, these are people I can never forget. He did exploit. So today, as an Ogoni man, look at the life of Birabi, a man who never built his own house, but went about building projects. Look, he used uh, what we call bamboo stick to construct, to, to construct pipe that would transfer water from the stream to build the Anglican church you see in Yege. <laughs> so this, the, the, man, the man was gifted. And he wanted Ogoni people to industrialize. Because as at that time, industrialization was on. And as a man that has gone abroad, he saw everything that was going on there. So when he came back home, he didn't wait for people to come and be clapping for him. He didn't sit down to be worshipped as a king. He went into the field with the people and employed them, come, let's do this together. And he went throughout the entire Ogoni, constructing roads building projects and everything. But no one funny thing, when he died, his ideas and everything. Because those who followed him, they forgot about everything. The same way, when Kensara Wewa came, and after the death of Kensara Wewa, look at what they are doing with Mosul today. Just imagine what they are doing with Mosul today. Imagine what they are doing with Mosul today. This is how they want the ideas of Mosul, Ogoni people, to be eradicated, to be completely out of existence. This is the same way they did to Birabi, if not that God always have a way out. God always have a, a, a way to bring a deliverer. That after 40 years that Birabi died, Ken Saranwiwa came up. Birabi died in 1953. Ken Saranwiwa took Ogoni again and presented Ogoni to the world in 1993 
after 40 years. So, that's why I tell you, no matter what they are doing to Ogoni people today, that's why the way they are trying to destroy Mosop and everything today, Ogoni will rise again. It was a divine, divine mission and it will rise again. So don't lose hope. The way they ensured that every trace of Birabi was, was destroyed, all the company, everything he created was destroyed, the same way they are trying to do with Mosop. But they will not succeed. Because it is a divine mission. And that divine mission must come to pass. Great Ogoni people, great. Thank you and God bless you.